What's going on YouTube? My name is Chris and welcome to Immodern Nation. Today I'm doing a full review of the Fleur One Pro thermal imaging camera. We're not just going ham on this review, we're going thermal. Whoa. Thermal imaging cameras are not new technology. In fact, infrared cameras have been used by many different industries. However, taking advantage of smartphone architecture is a trend that we continue to see today with the increased abundance of smartphones in consumers' pockets. Blur is not the only company to develop thermal imaging cameras for smartphone use. Seek Thermal also has their own line of smartphone camera attachments. However, Fleur has been doing it the longest. Forward Looking Infrared, or FLIR, has been developing their infrared technology since 1978. They have extensive use within government and military with their infrared detectors, as well as their chemical, biological, radiation, and explosive detection. Now let's take a look at the specs for this device. The FLIR 1 Pro weighs in at 36.5 grams. It's approximately three by one and a half inches and supposedly can handle a drop of up to 1.8 meters. However, we'll not be testing this quality because this is not one of those types of videos. The Flare One Pro has two cameras. It has a visual camera capable of 1440 by 1080p resolution, a thermal camera capable of 160 by 120 resolution, and can measure temperatures up to 400 degrees Celsius and temperatures as low as minus 20 degrees Celsius. The reason why it has two sensors is because the Fleur One Pro uses something called parallax technology, which allows you to not only see the thermal image, but you see the visual layer on top so that you're able to easily identify what it is that you're looking at. I'll have a couple examples of this to show you what I mean. The Fleur One Pro camera is powered by its own internal battery. However, it has a very abysmal one hour of operating time. Combine this with a 40 minute charging time and you're gonna spend more time charging the device than you will actually using it. In addition, the thermal camera has a frame rate of 8.7 Hertz, which is pretty abysmal. On the device, you might've noticed this blue adjustment wheel here, and this allows you to adjust the USB Type-C connector. It's adjustable up to four millimeters. I discovered that you do have the ability to charge the camera while it's in use. However, the manual explicitly states not to do this. I did it anyway, because I'm a badass. Next, I'm gonna be taking a look at the Fleur One app. Now, I do need to preface that the app has received a 2.8 rating on the Play Store. Let's take a look and find out why. When you open the app, you're greeted with this menu, which shows you the gallery of your photos, tips and tricks, community photos, and Fleur news. Opening the gallery takes you to the library of photos and videos that you've taken with the Fleur One device. It's here that you have the ability to edit it, share, or delete any of the images that you've taken. The tips and tricks section is going to show you helpful videos from Fleur about how to get the most out of your device. The videos are guides for around the home projects that you can accomplish with your device. The community section redirects you to a website showcasing some other users' videos and pictures on social media such as Instagram and Twitter. The Fleur news section just redirects you to another website that's discussing Fleur based news and social media posts. Boring! Let's get into the heart of the app that you really want to see. When you click on the mixer icon, this is the menu that you're going to see. MSX allows you to switch between the visible and thermal images. The palettes icon opens up nine different thermal backgrounds, including rainbow, lava, hottest, gray, arctic, coldest, iron, contrast, and this trippy one called wheel? Whoa, far out, man. The IR scale gives you a color range scale on your image to help you determine the hot and cold spots. Lock span locks the color range of your image. Parallax is supposed to allow you to adjust the distance between the camera and the image. Unfortunately, it didn't work for me. And finally, the gain setting allows you to switch between high and low gain settings depending on how hot the object is you're looking at. Objects like, say, the sun. 
There's a calibration button underneath the battery icon in case you don't have auto calibration turned on in the settings. Below that is a three second or 10 second timer that allows you to set up your shots. Below that, the flashlight icon allows you to turn on your phone's flash in order to illuminate the object that you're looking at if it's in a dark space. In the settings menu, you have the ability to change a number of features. This includes setting emissivity to the reflective capabilities of the object that you're looking at. Image rotation to compensate for USB connectors that are not placed on the bottom of your phone. Temperature units, depending on if you live in the United States or not. And finally, auto calibration. Clicking on the sights icon opens up the temperature meters. This is arguably the most important feature of the app. This menu allows you to adjust the number and type of temperature meters used. Once you've selected the number and type of meters used, you can click on the screen and drag them to the area of interest. With the spot meter, I had to double click on the screen before I could move it. I don't know why it does this, it could be just a bug. And you can use any combination of meters at the same time, including spot, circle, and rectangle. I also discovered that you're limited to three of each type of meter for a total of nine total meters at a single time. This could be useful for analyzing individual components that are close together, such as MOSFETs on a VRM. And yes, I tried it, they were all the same temperature. Next, I wanted to try out the time-lapse mode. By clicking on the clock icon, it brings up these menu settings. You can set the initial delay up to one minute. Frame interval is the time between exposures, and you're limited to up to 60 seconds. Playback rate is limited to 25 frames per second. And you can choose to show elapsed time if you want, or not. The time-lapse feature was wasn't very useful for me, so I just decided to take pictures of my crotch. Images look surprisingly sharp with the parallax technology used. You can see my TV in this shot, and you can see the refrigerator in this shot. I learned that the warmest part of your refrigerator is the top shelf and the doors. Great band, by the way. Wait. I think I used that joke before. Pictures come at a 6 by 9 aspect ratio, but sadly video only comes in 5.4. Frame rates are also so low that I would not recommend using video for most applications. I was able to use the camera to find useful things like this water leak in the ceiling. The camera is actually a lot of fun and allows me to take artsy type photos such as these. The Flare One Pro is also excellent at being able to articulate small differences in temperature. This was especially important when I was measuring the temperatures on my Plasti dipped motherboard. And if you want to see that video, click on the card in the upper right corner. The camera worked best when there were big differences in temperature. Here I was able to track moving objects much easier when there was a bigger contrast between the background and the moving objects. One of the most disappointing aspects about the app was that the settings menu disappears once you start recording. You would need to change emissivity settings if you're going to be changing textures. The problem is that this isn't possible while you're recording video. Many users have also reported the app crashes constantly and sometimes doesn't even recognize the camera when it's plugged in. Some users have even resorted to using other applications. The camera and app worked fine with my OnePlus 5, but your mileage may vary. So what are my final thoughts on this camera? Well, it does a really good job for what it's supposed to do. It does take great thermal images, helps identify hot spots, and has a multitude of features. If you're looking for a thermal imaging solution, this product could save you hundreds of dollars compared to a standalone unit. However, if you're a hobbyist or a gadget guru like myself, it's really hard to justify the $400 price tag. Did I mention the problems with the app, lack of instructions, poor battery life, mixed compatibility with different Android devices, and the fact that you need to register for an account and sign in each time you want to use the app? For $400, I expected a more polished user experience. I know that this is a very specialized device and this is more geared towards contractors or people that uh, need thermal imaging solutions for work or things that they do. It's not necessarily a hobbyist toy. I understand that and that might uh, deter some folks. And you know what? If you don't need all the features of the Fleur One Pro, maybe the Fleur One Original would be a better choice for you. I'm not even sure I would buy the Fleur One at half the price. I have to say that I got some use out of it, but one of those thermal temperature laser guns would have sufficed at just a fraction of the cost of this camera. It's a very cool product, but at the end of the day, that price tag is just too hot for me. So that's it for my review of the... Th I 
can't even say the product. So that's it for my review of the Fleur One Pro thermal imaging camera. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit the like button and share the video. Join the modern nation and get subscribed today by clicking on the subscribe button below. And when you do click on the bell icon inside of that subscribe button to be notified the moment that I release new YouTube videos. I'm releasing new YouTube videos every Saturday and Sunday, occasionally Monday when I get behind on editing. Uh, so make sure you click on that bell icon so that when those videos pop up, you'll be one of the first to check it out. Leave me a comment down in the comment section and let me know what do you think about the Fleur One Pro? Is this a device that you're thinking about purchasing? Uh, did some of the features uh, entice you? Uh, what do you think about the app? But I just wanna see what your guys' opinion is on that. So let me know by leaving me a comment below. If you have any other questions or comments, you can leave them for me in the comment section below. And as always, you can reach me on social media. I'm available via Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And you can catch me streaming video games live every Friday and Saturday evening on Twitch. On Fridays, you can catch me streaming on YouTube and Twitch. And on Saturdays, you can catch me streaming with fellow streamer Filthy Icon on Twitch. Check the times to the right to find out what my current schedule is. And when you buy products from Amazon, consider contributing to this channel by using the affiliate link in the video description below. Thank you so much for watching this video. And remember, if you can dream it, you can build it. Never stop creating, and I hope to see you in the next video.